Yo, what up? I'm back for another Coco's Thoughts episode. Another bonus, because the Dark Adductor playtest test has ended, and I thought, why not? Um, yeah. Uh, for me, nothing really happened this week. It was kind of... I don't know, the only thing that really me that was uh, memorable that, that happened this week was just the... Uh, I don't know, just the playtest ending. Dead Island 2 finally releasing, which I'll talk about on Sunday when I I don't look through it. Personally, I'm probably not going to buy it, though. I'm going to wait for a sale, most definitely, because I do not think... Ooh, I do not think the game is worth the amount of money, personally. But I'm also just, like, not willing to pay $60 for a game. There's not really a game that I've ever bought at full price besides, like, uh, Skyrim, I think, as a kid. When I was playing on, like, the, the PS2 or the PS3. And then, like, Call of Duty, Black Ops, and Black Ops 2, I paid for full price. But I had, like, no alternatives. If I could have bought those on sale, I probably would. I mean, heck, e even now it's freaking. Uh, if you get it on sale, probably like twenty bucks. And then you got all the the modding opportunities. If you're playing on PC, and then you, nobody really plays Call of Duty. I don't think many people even played on PC back then. But anyways, I'm like derailing already. Oh no, I gotta freaking. Oh, okay, never mind. That clicking to my notepad would uh take away the screen. So uh yeah. Dark Dark playtest ending. Like what? Uh probably a day ago, two days ago, on Wednesday, I think. Unfortunate seat leave. But I don't know, hoping that they do another playtest, hopefully before freaking twenty twenty four. Maybe, depending on how things go. And hopefully they'll have some uh, balance changes queued up. And the, the only real balance changes I'm wanting, I think, what is it? Fighter? Uh, Ranger could get like some minor, uh, maybe minor buffs to the arrow issue, maybe. I don't know. I haven't played enough Ranger to really feel the issue of the uh, running out of arrows. But uh, maybe just something to do with that. Other than that, I think they're like... I think they're alright. They're, they're not like bottom tier. They're not as bad as like Wizard and Bard. Like, Bard doesn't really have an identity. He shouldn't be just like limited to having a a rapier and being like a, a glorified rogue he, he needs more like support traits he needs to steal support traits from other classes so he can uh, at least compete with a cleric and then the wizard of course he he needs a uh, some change well they need some changes not i don't know exactly what but i'm sure it's probably something to do with like recharge times and Yeah, I can't think of too much else. The wizard. But also I don't I don't play wizard. I'm mostly just like fighter, cleric, and ranger. But um Rogue could definitely use some uh, nerfs though. Hopefully they implement fall damage. And implement a perk for rogues, I guess. So they have less thing less like benefits to themselves for combat and they either have to choose between like double jumping and having like high mobility versus uh being like good in combat because like right now they could just choose like double jump choose like a bunch of uh damage traits and 
in the ruins they, they kind of you know dominate it's mostly just like 90 percent rogues or something like that I didn't, I didn't check the uh the data that they published but i'm sure it's probably like 70 to 90 percent rogues in ruins on the uh, first floor so yeah I'm, I'm sure nerfing double jump to i think it should be obviously you know like the full jump and then like it should be a 0.5 jump And then, uh, you know, of course, like, implementing a perk maybe for them to, like, negate fall damage. And they do, like, a, a combat roll or something. Maybe even, like, make it a skill. And, yeah. On other news of Dark and Darker, if I could do this right. So apparently there is a uh, a thing with their lawyers contacting Steam. And I will have this posted in the comment section if you want to read what these guys had to say. And uh, click this article. Basically, it's just about, just like a quick summary. Apparently, uh, Iron Mace has hired a former employee of Nexon. And this is like the one of the main reasons because they're like anti competition apparently. Well, I mean, yeah, they're just like anti competition, and you know, obviously arguing over assets. But I feel like, hopefully, maybe if like Valve, since they did send a letter to Valve, I'm thinking. I'm really hoping that Valve decides to like uh actually relist it a after you know well I mean after all this is over they'll obviously do it but I why not I need to learn more about like the MCA clan thing I should have learned that about that before I started make the video but. Hopefully they there's like the main thing that Iron Mace like needs right now in order for this game to like really function and obviously you know next one's blocking it is the freaking DMCA thing and also the uh accessibility to Steam servers in a marketplace. Just for the sake of actually like getting money possibly from the game. So they could do all the back end stuff and like pay employees because right now they're kinda like doing it for free besides the uh I think they're I think they have a Patreon. But I don't know. I'm really hoping that this doesn't like they list here they've been pursuing the claim for two years. So I'm ho I'm really hoping that I don't have to wait two years for this game. And also this uh this entire situation is kinda similar to Monster Energy. Because apparently they, they're suing over the use of the word monsters. And it's kind of similar to have Dark and Darker suing over assets that are that are being used within their game. And like, it's kind of like a side thing. Or maybe it's like the main thing that a, uh, a former employee is working there. Supposedly. It's just what I'm assuming. And with the uh, ending of the playtest, I could keep these open so I can link them in the comments. I'm gonna do like a monster tier list, although it's like very obviously scuffed. I'm just gonna handwrite them in with my terrible handwriting. I'm gonna go through these. I'm not gonna go through the bosses really, because I don't really I haven't personally fought any of them. But the cave. Cave Troll is cheesable, so, so, Cave Troll, uh, Ghost King, I mean, his main thing is the, uh, scream and his jump is, like, his, uh, main ability to, like, catch you off with, so I'd say it's, like, maybe in between A and B. But also, like, his loot's pretty good. And same with the cave troll. 
This, I'm guess this whole thing is gonna be scaled off of uh, difficulty. By the way, pure difficulty. I think Ghost King is like B tier. And the Lich, I think the Lich, if if you do not have a cleric, you're kind of gonna lose them. So I think he kind of deserves like almost like S A tier ranking. As also with the uh, resummoning of skeletons, one of them being a crossbow skeleton, he deserves a uh, S tier. I think, just personally. And also is the uh, the homing projectile that possibly can uh, instantly kill you if you don't have enough magic resist and then you have the wraith skeleton champion demon centaur so you have the wraith the wraith is cheesable so he goes into this tier kind of garbage handwriting but eh. them as paint right with the mouse uh skeleton champion he's also cheesable so, if anybody's cheesable, it goes right into this thing. So, let's go with SC. Let's go with the H, because there's also the cross skeletal crossbowman. Destroy that more. That's. Oh, wait. Uh, real quick about the loot, too. Obviously, you know, good loot, depending on the difficulty. Uh,. You know, obviously Wraith is good. Skeleton champion. I think he's an eh. If I killed him once and he, he like gave me a absolute garbage. And to be honest, I'm just gonna base it all off of that. Does he even have like a loot tab? Oh yeah, those are not very good percentages for the uh epic rarity being under four percent. Ooh. It's not even worth killing him. It's better off just like avoiding him because he deals the, the the combo attack. If you do not have a shield, it, it just freaking annihilates your HP. If you're not like I don't know, somebody who can carry a shield. So it's not even worth even fighting him. Uh, unless you can like get on top of a torch or something and then just like poke his face in. Wonder what is the demon senator drop? Oh my god, absolute garbage. It is not even worth <laughs> even attacking him. He has. He's just wasting time for you to not attack the Ghost King or the Lich in the, uh, the third level. There's no point. So, let me see. Let's go to Demon Centaur. Not even worth. But wait. Ah, crap. I'm going off the difficulty. But he's also cheesable. Because you can just stand on top of something, just like Focus Skull. Uh, Death Skull, you cannot cheese, but you can easily kill him with a uh, a simple uh, swing with like a, a trash tier weapon it can uh, instantly kill this. Because he only has 26 HP. So. So Death Skull. Uh, giant dragonfly, annoying, but he goes here. Also, uh, they both drop pretty decent loot. I've gotten, like, every ring and amulet off of death skulls in the, uh, goblin caves. In dragonflies, I think they, I think I've once gotten a, maybe, uh, Call yeah, three point two percent. It's not that good, but how else are you gonna get freaking amulets? Uh, mimics. They go here. It's very garbage. Uh, mummy. Uh, they're kind of annoying with their gas ability. I don't think they're too insane though. Not that difficult, I would think. Let me see. I'm trying to think. Has there ever been a? I don't think I've ever really died to a mummy. 
Oh yeah, they do have the new uh combo attack. No, no, it's the zombie who gets the combo attack, I think. I don't think it's the mummy. Oh no. I can't remember. Is it the mummy? Mm -hmm. They don't have it listed. Does it have it listed here? Yes, he does the poisonous cloud. I'm pretty... I can't remember if it's the freaking zombie or the mummy. He doesn't. Alright, well, I can't remember which one. No. Mm. Super hard to determine. Whatever. M mummy and... Mummy goes here. And then the, the zombie can have B tier, because I'm pretty sure he does the combo attack. So if you're trying to kill him in range, it's annoying. And also the uh, poisonous cloud catches people off sometimes. If you're fighting them, and you're like sandwiching them. Uh, skeleton archer. Uh... He can go right here. Just due to the... The freaking headshots are really annoying. So, he deserves that. Also, did I ever... Okay, never mind. I thought it had, uh... The Goblin Caves as, like, a separate tab. The Skeleton Footmen. You know, C tier. I'm just, I'm just rating him as S tier, just simply because it, it doesn't even matter if you get behind a wall or something to try to dodge him. Or even if you like try to put up your shield and block your face, he will still hit you. So he has like a very consistent damage output compared to like the rest of these guys. As long as you have like a ranged stop in or or you're like uh even like a cleric. You just like as a cleric just judgment these instantly die. This one you can just dodge to the side. You know, mummies are slow, so you just like poke them back off. But Skeleton Archer, he will headshot you. So don't even try. Skeleton Footman. Crap, was this? No. It shouldn't even be K. No, I can't. I can't undo it. No, man. Uh. I can't write. Uh, so you have the uh, the guardsman now. The guardsman is annoying. He can be put here. SKG. Uh, skeleton mage. If you're fighting him in the ruins, he's really annoying, because uh, he can, the uh, little stone circle. Monument. Uh, he can shoot through the freaking uh, rocks for whatever reason. But uh, other than that, I mean, you could just like go behind a wall. Cast is useless. Sometimes you can just like back off of him and dodge to the side. So it requires like a little bit of mechanics. So I think he deserves like an A. Unless you're like a ranged. No, no, he he should be in. Please, no. <laughs> there, there's my eraser. All this is for fun, by the way. There, B tier. Uh, spider mummy. Spare mum and C tier, obviously. Very easy. One shot him. The zombie is annoying. But he's already listed. A uh, demon bat. I've really faced a demon bat. I've really seen many people even face up against the demon bat. Oh jeez, my my is four hundred. 
It's a high amount of knockback. All right, so just seeing that. Pretty sure he's A tier. He's annoying. It will probably knock you into the uh, the damage over time stuff that's down there. Demon dog. Yeah, the the jumping attacks are kind of annoying. Maybe he should also go here because you can't choose them. But also, it, it depends on like the area that you're fighting him. Hmm. Let's put double D down here. Demon dog. Although it looks like a P. Close enough. Alright, Death Beetle. Death Beetle's annoying. Mm. Sometimes you can dodge him. And sometimes you can't. So I feel like he should he should be like B tier. Just for fun. Ball has a heat. They can't die in one attack for whatever reason. Even though they're very small. And at least for like the only case that you see him in goblin caves, it's like kind of annoying with the mobs that surround him. Because it could be a, a goblin mage or a skeleton champion within the same area. So the slow can really mess you up. So I think. I think Death Beetle should go into B tier. So, just simply due to the slow, and you have to hit him more than once in order to kill it. And apparently has projectile resistance, so you can't just like poke him down very easily. Just depends on time and place. I, I at least with like my experience, I think Death Beetle is kind of annoying, and also if he's a. Uh, what does the red mean? If it's elite? Yeah. If it's elite, it's like especially annoying. Uh, Goblin Archer. Mm. Goblin Archer is like similar to freaking Skeleton Archer. I think simply due to the, the annoying poisons, it's very easy to kill. Yeah. But... Because, you know, you hit him and every goblin will flee as soon as you uh, get it to, like, a certain, like, HP threshold. I think Goblin Archer, personally, I think it should be an A tier. So. So, Go Goblin Archer deserves to be an A tier, I think. Simply due to the poisoning, and also the arrows can uh, freaking the the annoying headshots are just the main thing. You you have to like back away, have a little bit of like confidence when you're facing it to uh dodge the arrow. You have to back up like a little bit, maybe like five steps, which isn't that much, and then you just like dodge in one direction. Don't try to juke it. Uh. Goblin Warrior. Goblin Warrior with shield is different than like the regular Goblin Warrior. But. Let's put the Goblin and see. You could. You can easily like sidestep his abilities. Well, sidestep his uh, attacks and swings. So. Should be easy. Uh, Goblin Mage, on the other hand, Goblin Mage deserves to be in B tier due to the uh, his cast having a slightly longer, what you call it, um, duration as soon as it hits its uh, target, like on the ground or you. It, it will stay there for a little bit, and if you walk into it, you still get hit. So, I think he deserves to be there. And then I'm pretty sure his cast also... Yeah, it, it does a... Uh, 
I think it's just an unhealable soul, but I think it prevents you from uh, drinking your potions, which I think deserves a uh, a little bit extra. Because not being able to, not being able to heal in the goblin caves is like it's very hard. See, everything freaking poisons you. And also, since it lingers, it's kind of hard to tell whether or not it's, you know, there or not. Until so you walk over and you find out. Uh, the giant bat. Giant bat. Goes in C tier. He does drop. I'm pretty sure this dude does drop jewelry. Let me check real quick. Okay, they don't have it listed yet. Pretty sure I got at least a ring from him. And also, he's incredible. Why is the bat so endurable? Why does it have 110 HP more than an archer? And, and more than a, a freaking death beetle? I don't understand that. It's kind of interesting, too. I didn't know that it dealt more damage than the death beetle. I thought the death beetle was more annoying. But that's only like its base hit, though. The, the, the lingering poison is the most annoying part of the goblin caves. I wonder if they'll ever implement a uh, poison resist potion for the sake of just poison abilities in general. I'm sure they'll implement plenty of mobs outside of the goblin caves that will use poison. Uh, the wisp. Uh, the wisp in terms of the flashbang is S tier. The wisp, the, he, I'm only going to categorize him just for the flash. The flashbang is insane. Luckily, I've literally never ran into a, a wisp running in the ruins. I don't know how I haven't run into one, even though I did like the entire outside of the map because I'm a rat and I usually play rogue. So I go around for all the golden chest. Surprisingly, I did not encounter a wisp, but watching streamers encounter wisps. And have that blinding light and watch them in a, a pitch black room. Just get a flashbang. It, it, it deserves the, the S tier ranking. Uh, dire Wolves. Alright, the Dire Wolf pack. So DWP. If you're fighting a Dire Wolf pack yourself. Is uh, really annoying. Trying to even get into like a, a spot where you could just poke them down is painful unless you're like obviously a rogue but i was playing a fighter just a base fighter and i spawned immediately where the direwolf pack was and i literally could not do anything i just got surrounded before i could uh hop up anywhere and start poking uh skeletal swordsman mm, this thing with the big sword right Hmm. Nah, it's it's not the it's not the same as the spearman. So skeletal swordsman, he can go into like S tier, I think. He swings in horizontal motion. Hmm. I'm, no, this one only has like the one swing animation. Nah, he he goes down here. And the uh, Skeletal Crossbowman, obviously, S tier, right next to the Skeleton Archer, so. Just the damage this thing deals, and it, it's just, like, unavoidable. I swear to God. It, he does have, like, that reload time, though, which makes him balanced. But, God, just, like, walking around, even in freaking, uh... I think it's called Inferno. Even walking around in Inferno and this thing's there. Especially since he can spawn from the Lich, which is the reason why Lich is up here. It, it is uh Yeah, he's just he just ruins your runs. 
so he deserves it just for that. Uh, Skeletal Wooden Barrel. It doesn't matter. You, you can hit him before he stands. SWB. I hope none of these are... I hope none of these have other meanings that I don't know of. Gosh. Uh, Skeleton Axeman. Uh, I think... I feel like he might deserve A tier. I didn't really face too many of these. I faced the Spearman, and he was really annoying, and he had shot me. So... Mm, I think Skeleton Spearman also deserves to be S tier. Due to the poking ability that he has, he deserves it. And then Skeletal Axeman. Hmm. I didn't really face too many of these. I mostly only, I only saw a Spearman. And I saw plenty of Crossbowmen. But I think, also the, the Axeman, since he is like a, a light barbarian, he can probably like one shot you if he gets a, if he lands a headshot. Mm. I think he deserves like maybe, it's like B or A. I think, I think I'm going to stick him in B tier. It's just, I can't write. I can't write with the mouse. This is why I don't do art. But I did do the upper art, of course, and paint. Is there anything else I'm missing? Uh, nope. Anyways, that's the tier list for the monsters. Um. And yeah. Lich, annoying. Direwolf pack, if you don't have any gear and you don't know where to hop up, they will wreck you. Skeleton Archer, uh, headshots, crossbow headshots, spear headshots, really annoying. Flashbang, your eyes. And I know probably most people who play this game probably play it in very dimly lit rooms or no light at all. So the flashbang, yeah, S tier. Demon Bat. Annoying. He has the knockback. And also he has way more health than other flying mobs that will come at you. So, yeah, 170. Deserves it. Uh, Gabo Archer ruins plenty of newbies. Doesn't really matter what your gear is if you get headshot for uh, maybe like half to like a quarter of your HP. And it's like sometimes unavoidable. He deserves it. Then you have the. Well, just like everybody else. If I were to rate it on loot, though, this would obviously be plenty different. But just difficulty that I've found and what other people have found. Yeah. To be honest, none of these really like need any nerfs. I think the headshot mechanic that these three share. The skeleton and trigger, skeleton crossbowman, skeletal spear. I, I think that's uh I think that's fine, to be honest. I, I like the it, you should never feel too comfortable. You should always think it is this skeleton possibly gonna hit me in the face and one shot me. That that should always be on people's minds. They should never get comfortable. It that's what this game should be. Like you should never be like, oh, you know, oh, it's just another you know, Goblin Archer, I could just come up to it and just hit it on the face and then it'll start fleeing and I'll be fine. No, I want it to have the chance of turning around at you and avenging its Gobbo brothers. Like the, the Gobbo Mage or the Gobbo and it hit you in the face. And then you're like, oh, well, lost all my root. Well, lost all my loot. And then you like freaking slam your desk or something. So he deserves to be there. And they shouldn't get nerfed. Because that, to be honest, they're pretty balanced. It's really just like a skill issue if you like getting hit in the face, I guess. 
not not really though sometimes it's unfair but yeah that's the tier list looks pretty bad though if you like just skip to the very end of this and you just see this ranking you just like can't read it because my handwriting's so bad but yeah anyways i'm gonna move on to my other segment if i can figure out how to freaking use my computer uh we have the anime segment obviously spoiler warning um i only watched oshinoku and kami sakai so i'm just gonna go over those two things uh oshinoku the intro that they did was uh pretty good actually it really i think it might be like one of the better intros that i've seen so far out of all the animes i've watched i i i feel like the the cat anime might take the the cake for the intro i feel like it might have a good one but i don't know yet but yeah the intro is good the outro though i think i like the my one hit kill sisters outro more just personal preference. I, I know apparently the outro for Oshinoko is done by I think it's Queen B. And they did the intro for Doro, the the first intro. That intro was very good. And I know it's just like a side note that I have. Also another thing too. Why are there like 20 different uploads for every intro and outro song for freaking animes don't don't those like get copyright or something do people make money off freaking just uploading those i know people most definitely make money off of clips because they uh they sometimes get like advertisers but i never see the intro and outro people ever have advertisers so do they get money off the views somehow I don't know, just like a, a random rambling that I have. But anyways, going over the Oshinoko episode two. Uh, it's sad to see Ichigo leave uh, so quickly after I dying. I, I was expecting that he would probably stick around and try to help Ruby uh, maybe get like a head start in her uh, idling career. Because I, I feel like Ruby could most definitely use that. And considering how Aqua dealt with the underground company that scouted her. And how apparently there's a obvious favoritism within that group. It, it, it would have been at least like nice, you know, to I don't know, help out your former colleague's uh, kid get established in the idling career or the idling business and maybe getting her to the dome but i guess uh, i don't know maybe later they'll uh talk about ichigo and how it took well how he took it like very personally on like what happened or maybe he uh he had a hand in what happened to i i'm i'm sure it's probably he had a hand in i's death somehow Also, it's kind of funny that the whole favoritism thing is so realistic too. It even at my job, you, you can like kiss up to your boss, and we have a raise system based on uh performance in quotes, but really it's just like how much does your boss like you? Because performance does not matter. It, you can sweat and try your best but it, it won't transfer you to your uh your raise i don't know i just wanted to make that connection to the uh underground group that's uh attempting to scout ruby because uh they were in a romantic relationship and i'm sure through that relationship they get better offers and all the scraps get offered to the 
other idols. Oh my god, I have to open up this freaking window, it's too hot in here. Jeez. It, it's only freaking 51 degrees and somehow my room is like, it feels like it's 80. I don't know how. My, my computer is not that hot. But anyways. Uh, Taishi's, Taishi's mother is great. And just uh, jumping onto that. I'm surprised Taishi is super. Taishi is just like insanely nice to Aqua. And. I don't know. It, it's kind of. It's just super weird that he just keeps like trying to dismiss the uh, dream of becoming an actor, even though his, they had the uh, scene where it flashed back to apparently I was saying Aqua should become an actor. But then he's just like, oh, I'm going to. This like very prestigious school for uh, performance arts to just to uh, do like general studies. All right, never mind. Never mind. I have to keep my window shut because the uh, smoker who's uh, fumes get into my freaking room. So I can't have the freaking window open. But yeah, anyways. It's kind of funny that uh Aqua applying to the school for the uh, performance arts with Ruby just to simply be there for her. Uh, apparently managed to keep most of his uh knowledge about just medical I guess, what is it like medical practice or something? I don't know, just have all that information from uh, when he was a doctor after, what is it now? I'm assuming he's like 16 at this point in the story. Because he's like entering high school and he has to do the exam thing. It's kind of crazy after 16 years of not even practicing medicine that he's still able to maintain all that uh, knowledge I don't know, at least, like, personally, I, I I would probably forget about, like, my personal, uh, was it, like, college studies, at least within, like, a year. I still remember, like, some things. I went to school for, what is it, uh, computer science, and, like, a main focus in cybersecurity. I like still remember some things, but I can't remember everything. I'd probably tell you like a little bit about I don't know hacks maybe if I had to, but I probably couldn't tell you too much about like how to prevent them and like what methods had to be used will have to be uh, used or whatever practices need to be implemented for the users on the network. But anyways. Another derailment. It was interesting to see uh, Arma's eyes when they uh, when she turned to see Aqua. I didn't expect her to also have as much detail. I don't know. For the other characters, they didn't really do too much. Ichigo didn't get anything special. Taishi didn't get anything special. Uh, Miyako, they're... Uh, I guess guardian or parent, the only individual that they could trust, doesn't have anything special in her eyes. So, I don't know, maybe, I guess it's like related to the ambition that Taishi was talking about. I don't know, maybe that's just a thing for adults. Don't get anything special. And, uh, yeah, it's interesting to see, too, that, uh, freaking Aqua just says, 
that he's not going to pursue a career in acting. Even though the... I guess, like, I would think, like, most of the story has definitely hinted toward him actually pursuing a career in acting. There's no way that he just, like, goes to the school and he just gives up on it. I'm pretty sure there's going to be some sort of button that is pushed and it's just going to cause him to go into it. Otherwise, I, I can't really think about, like, what arc this show is going to cover. Besides, like, Ruby being the main character. Getting into the idol business. I don't know. Never really, like, established, like, what's, like, the main goal. I guess besides, like, Aqua. Getting into acting just to see uh, who killed. Or who helped kill his mom. But he's, like, also given up on it. I don't know. But whatever. We're only on, like, episode two. I gotta wait till, like, episode maybe eight. Till they establish, like, uh... Oh, what is it? A goal, maybe? I don't know how this, uh... Show will go around executing that. But... Yeah. I'm gonna move on to, uh... Kamenaki Sekai. So, I don't know, the show's like a little bit special. It's kind of interesting how things go. The, they decide to use CGI monsters, which look very ugly. But then at the same time, the implement pixel art, or the 8-bit the pixel art, and it looks... Pretty good, to be honest. I, I think, personally, if they did all the fighting scenes where they would you normally choose the CGI route, if they just did, like, pixel art combat, I think this show would be really good. But, also, like, the mood of the show is kind of just, like, being a joke. You know, because... I mean, like, the the god, she kind of just, like, bends the the rules, basically, in the favor of the, uh, the main character. So. I don't know, I, I guess, like, the CGI, like, kind of works, but personally, I would just prefer if they would just go over, use the 8-bit pixel art for the combat and sometimes the sequences in between whatever they were like talking to each other like the god i think his name is freaking i can't remember i think it's miyato right oh let me pull it up am i miyato right no you could tell I hate names. I can never do names. Yeah, Yukito and Akami, when they were talking to each other, 8 bit perfect. I was thinking that they were going to do Bertrand uh, rendering the beast in half in the 8 bit. Well, they didn't really establish the 8 bit that early in the episode, but they should have done it in the 8 bit format. I think it would have looked really good. But, oh, that's enough of my rambling. Good. Uh, I don't know. Freaking Bertrand wearing the uh, outfits was pretty good. The made outfit was pretty funny. And also the, the weird, like, what is it? What would the word would be? I don't know, feathery, slash uh, very skimpy, I think the word would be. Yeah, skimpy. That was a pretty good one. I think that's literally all the money that they saved uh, not animating the CGI monsters for that final outfit with all the feathers and how revealing it was. 
That's most definitely like where all their money went. And um, on a side note, Clen and the how, what are they categorized as? Just like uh the Emperor's weapons or whatever it is, Emperor's girls. see her name real quick uh when atar i guess was talking to uh whatever the other machine or whatever it is uh, when they were talking to each other that person sounded really similar to clen which uh somebody said within the uh discussion page about the episode and they also have like very similar like characteristics. They have like a, a similar face because uh, whenever they were talking to each other, they would usually have the upper lip oddly defined for whenever they were like smiling. And I don't know, I feel like that's, it's kind of odd thing to have. So I'm assuming they're probably like the same person seems like a, a pretty reasonable assumption and also apparently their voices are a little bit similar as well like obviously is clen they make it sound like a little bit more masculine or they try to but they're, they're just like super similar and atar is also assigned to kind of like watch over them and I'm thinking maybe the other girl has a, I don't know, some sort of goal given from the emperor to try to figure out like what the, I don't even know if they know if it's, if it's a, a god or not, but try to see what Mitama and Yukito are doing in this, in this uh, village. And also, I feel like the Emperor is also a girl. And I feel like it's just like a, a nerd or something. And they're just like really good at tech. I'm sure it's probably going to have like the uh, stereotype where they have like very long hair. And they have like just like massive round glasses. And then they maybe have like a, a body double that acts as like the actual Emperor. Or something like that. That's what I'm betting. But on a, like a more plot related note, though, it's kind of it's kind of weird how the show obviously you know it's not supposed to be taken seriously, and they it's like occasionally funny, it's like sometimes uh just like abusing Roy as a uh, as a joke. It's kind of weird that they kind of just accelerate within a month from i'd assume to be like an iron slash bronze age due to the uh the guards gear for the city to just jump to the wind mills and all the tractors and hoses and all the other freaking advanced technology that they have I'm assuming, obviously, for the plot, I'm sure it's probably going to end up being, like, all the guards arrive at the village, and they see all the technology, and they, I'm assuming they'll probably run away, or they'll be impressed by it, and they'll want to defend the village, and they'll, like, get converted to the religion somehow. I feel like one of the two. But, yeah, like, regardless of that, though, I... I think this show is like still pretty good, although like obviously like the CGI, eh. but uh, I think it's pretty entertaining. I just wonder like what else they're gonna really do, because I mean they, it's like episode three now, and they've already accelerated to like kind of current day technology within this other world. Like what else is there to do? 
I feel like this is kind of like the same thing for like mangas. They kind of like, oh, we. It's like a manga that I'm reading right now about a dude who has the ability to heal, I think. And he like defeats the, like the king. And I don't think there's like really any gods that exist. But now it's kind of hit the point in the story where it's like, now what? Like you, you defeated the king and now there's like nothing really else to do. Like, like what are you going to do? You're going to go against God. You're going to go up against like within Kami, uh, Naki Sekai. You're going to go up against freaking Mitama who's giving you all these things? No. What are you going to do? You're going to defeat the uh, dude who's created the weapons, Atar and whatever the other girl is. And then what? Uh, or maybe it just ends. But uh, that's just like my two cents. Regardless, it's still good. Not complaining. Just want to know what happens next. Want to binge watch the rest of the season already. Even though it's literally just started. But, yeah. That's about it for this episode. Uh, Sunday, I'm going to talk about Probably like a little bit of Dead Island. Go over the other animes that have the other animes that I didn't talk about within this episode. Uh, one hit kiss, one hit kill sister aired. So I'm gonna watch that and talk about that on the Sunday. And I think I'm gonna talk about uh the Pokemon ending because the Pokemon ending kind of disappointed me a little bit because. I don't know why they didn't have. I think her name is Sabrina, right? So, I think it's Sabrina. Let me go real quick. No, it's not Sabrina. Completely different character. Let me just Google who kissed Ash. Uh, Bianca? Oh my god, there's too many. Why Why did somebody rank them? <laughs> why are you ranking Ash's kisses? Whatever it is. Oh, Serena. Oh, why didn't Serena show up in the, uh, his final fight like well he became he was going to you know freaking do his like final uh champion uh pokemon fight uh, why wasn't like some uh serena there i, I don't understand that i don't know they, they seem like pretty close and i didn't she like promise the I don't know, witness one of his uh, final clashes or something. Mm -hmm. I, I would have to be a writer to understand this. I I'm sure it's probably just they completely forgot about her. But somehow they remember Dawn. E even though Dawn's not even interested in, in Pokemon battles or even aiming to become champion, they just want to do their little pageants. I don't know. Just a random thing. Because uh, Ash has been the main character for... Uh, ever since I was a kid. Watching Pokemon grow up. But, yeah. It's a topic for another day. But yeah. That's the end of this episode. I also I forgot to freaking say that this is uh, 421. Hopefully you had a... If you celebrate 420, you know, good on you. Hopefully you had a good one. And uh, hopefully you have a good weekend. And uh, peace. See ya Sunday. Bye-bye.